Single statement, Corey Lewandowski slaps all hope out of Mueller's team for good by US4Trump.com. Corey Lewandowski, who recently joined the Vice President's Political Action Committee, came out swinging this morning on Fox News Sunday. Chris Wallace asked about the Mueller witch hunt and if uh, the president is subpoenaed, will he testify? Corey responded, they will take it to court and I believe the court's going to be on the president's side on this. And Mark Levine agrees, Western Journalism reports. Levine, Mueller has no constitutional authority to subpoena Trump. On Capitol Hill, many uh, believe the uh, Trump and Mueller, into the Mueller-Trump interview is simply a trap for perjury. Of course it is. It is a way for the witch hunt to indict Trump. Moreover, it was revealed over the weekend that the president's legal team had even written a letter to Mueller in January. It claimed that Trump could not be forced to testify and could not have committed obstruction of justice because of his broad authority as president, Fox reported uh, reports. Uh, Corey uh, did say that the president's team is still willing to testify. And just a few moments ago, Fox tweets this. Lewandowski says Trump's legal team will uh, take it to court if Mueller subpoenas president. Mueller has no bias to subpoena the president of the United States. Clearly, the presidential power includes wiping uh, the special counsel off the map if he desires. An innocent man does what POTUS is doing. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the video. Lewandowski says Trump's legal team will take it to court if Mueller subpoenas president. What I get here is when he says uh, Trump could uh, not be for, wait, not the to testify. Corey did say that the president's team is still willing to testify. Why would he testify if he doesn't have to do all of this? What is this? begin with breaking news, the New York Times is the first to report a story that President Trump's legal team sent a memo to special counsel Robert Mueller in January asserting broad presidential powers. In the memo, the lawyers argue the president cannot be compelled to testify and cannot obstruct justice because he has authority over all federal investigations. And new lead lawyer Rudy Giuliani tells ABC News, if Mueller tries to subpoena us, we're going to court. Joining us now from Manchester, New Hampshire, President Trump's first campaign manager and current advisor, Corey Lewandowski. Corey, is that the president's view that he cannot be compelled to testify and that he cannot, as the president, obstruct justice? Well, Chris, I think, look, I'm, an, I'm not an attorney, so I want to be very clear about this, but what this memo outlines and what their team has said was, if the Mueller team is going to potentially subpoena the president, that is something that they believe is not authorized because of his position. Now, what they're trying to do, Chris, is they're trying to sit down and figure out if the president is going to sit down for an interview, and that interview is going to be based on a narrow scope of questions that the team is trying to negotiate right now. But what Rudy Giuliani has said, as the president's attorney, is if the Mueller investigators decide to subpoena this president, they will take it to court, and I believe the court is going to be on the president's side on this. But, and this specific issue has never been adjudicated, but there is a long history of the courts ordering presidents to do something and presidents agreeing to do it. A subpoena is a court order. Thomas Jefferson had to bow to a court order. Richard Nixon had to bow to the Supreme Court in releasing the Watergate tapes. Uh, Bill Clinton had to bow to the Supreme Court when it came to testifying in the Paula Jones civil suit. Well, well, that's exactly right. But you have to remember, look, the Giuliani legal team is trying to negotiate with the Mueller team to decide if it is the right thing to sit down and have this interview, and if so, they want to understand what the scope of the questions are. So there's the potential to avoid a subpoena entirely if the teams can work together and it is determined that the questions that will be asked will be relevant to an investigation to prove once and for all there was no collusion. And it sounds like what Giuliani 
and his team are saying is, you don't need to go to the subpoena route, but if you do, we will fight it in court. The president has been very clear. He's offered to sit down with the Mueller investigators, but he has said, and the Giuliani team has said this, they want to understand what the scope of questions are going to be before they sit down and do that. I, I, I want to just try to narrow this down a little bit. Mueller, uh, or rather Giuliani says, if Mueller gets a, a subpoena, which is a court order, Giuliani and the president's legal team are going to go to court. What if the court says, no, Mr. President, you're wrong. Is the president prepared under his understanding of his powers in the executive branch, is he prepared to defy a court order? Look, I, I don't think so, and I haven't spoken to the president about it. That's a question for his legal team. But I think the president clearly respects the rule of law in the country. There's no question about that. But what they're doing is, Chris, there's a way to avoid all of this. There's a way to avoid a potential constitutional issue on this, which is working with Mayor Giuliani and his legal team and the Mueller investigators, if they can come up to a resolution which is going to ask the president to sit down and have a conversation, which is limited in scope, present the interrogatories, then the team will decide if the president's willing to do this. But Chris, at the end of the day, what the Mueller investigators can do is they can write a report to Congress and to the Justice Department and show that there was no collusion between the president and the Russians, and that's where we are. So if the president is asked to sit down and discuss this, he is going to say exactly that because I know it to be true, you know it to be true, and the American people know there was no collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. I want to talk about another part of the memo, and we again should point out, this was a memo that was written by the president's former legal team in January, including John Dowd, uh, was sent to Mueller. Rudy Giuliani was not part of that, but as the president's lead lawyer, he is embracing that January memo. And another part of it basically says the president has the ability to pardon anybody he wants. I want to look back at that because the president has been busy with his pardoning this week. He pardoned Dinesh D'Souza, a conservative author, this week, going around the normal process of going to the Justice Department, the Office of Pardon Attorney. He did it unilaterally. He says he may pardon Martha Stewart. He may pardon former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. The top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee said even before this latest round of pardons that he saw a pattern. Here he is. I think the president is sending a message. Basically, I will use the pardon power to pardon people even that have been convicted of leaking or obstruction of justice. Uh, if you're with me, I have your back. And longtime Trump advisor Roger Stone said this. It has to be a signal to Mike Flynn and Paul Manafort and even Robert Mueller indict people for crimes that don't pertain to Russian collusion and that is what could happen. So, are you saying, is the president saying, is Rudy Giuliani saying he can pardon anybody he wants including people that are swept up in the special counsel's investigation? Well, Chris, the Constitution is very clear, and the power of the president, as defined by the Constitution, allows him to pardon anybody he wants for federal crimes. That's right. And no one is talking about the pardon of the heavyweight boxing champion, Jack Johnson, that he pardoned. It was something that the Obama administration had the opportunity to do, and others, but chose not to. And so people want to make this a political issue. The pardoning of Dinesh D'Souza was a one-off. But this president has pardoned, I think, 0.7% of the applicants in front of him, which is a far lower number than any previous president at this point. And so look, is he going to pardon the Mark Riches of the world like the Clintons did? Of course not, right? Those are personal friends of the president back then who had crimes committed against uh, our government that were convicted, but, but, and but, they were pardoned for political but, Corey, if, he, if he were to pardon, and I emphasize if he were to pardon Michael Flynn or Paul Manafort, people that could conceivably give evidence against him, that's a lot worse than Mark Ridge. Yeah, but, but Chris, what, what Chris, does, uh, Chris Wallace does not understand is that he is the President of the United States and he can pardon anyone he wants to pardon. So all this witch hunt of Mueller's is a waste of time and I can't wait till Mueller should be prosecuted. That's what I'd like to see. Poor little Chris crying that now Trump, who is president, 
of the United States of America has the power to do what he wants and you all you are just little guys in front of Trump. Absolutely no evidence whatsoever that the president has ever discussed having a pardon for Mike Flynn or Paul Manafort or anybody else for that matter. And with all due respect to Roger Stone, I don't think he has any idea what he's talking about. This is not a sign. Look, I don't know of the president's relationship with Dinesh D'Souza. I don't know. Uh, I had never met Dinesh D'Souza, so I don't think it was a strong relationship between the president and him. But Correct. he looked at that particular case, saw mm -hmm. an injustice that was done, which, by the way, Chris, was selective enforcement by the previous administration That's right. for a campaign finance violation, the same exact vi finance violation that I think Roseanne Barr has admitted to, giving too much money to candidates, and we haven't seen a prosecution of her for that. And so the president pardoned Dinesh D'Souza oh, on a he made a mistake. opportunity. But he made a mistake. Ever, ever has this president he said, made a mistake. To the best of my knowledge, he, 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 he said Roseanne Barr. No, he meant Rosie O'Donnell. He got that mistaken. Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, uh, making uh, campaign donations at, from different addresses using different names. That's where he made, he said R Roseanne Barr. No, it was Rosie O'Donnell. Thinking about a pardon in for uh, Mike Flynn or but you're saying, but you are anybody saying that else he could, associated But you with are him. saying that he could do it if he wanted to. That's right. Well, yeah, of course, under the Constitution, he has the legal authority to pardon anybody. That's the power that lies strictly with the President of the United States, no question. All right, I want to go to a couple of other subjects. Let's turn to Spygate, the allegation by you and others, and of course by President Trump, that the FBI inserted a spy into the campaign. Here's what President Trump said, and also what Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy said after he got a classified briefing from the Justice Department and the FBI. Well, how do you like the fact they had people infiltrating our campaign? Can you imagine? I am even more convinced that the FBI did exactly what my fellow citizens would want them to do when they got the information they got, and that it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. Corey, uh, that's Trey Gowdy. He's a conservative Republican. He led the Benghazi investigation, and he is undercutting what the president and, frankly, people like you talk about when you, when you discuss spy day. Well, Chris, I'm very concerned. What we don't know unequivocally is did the FBI take an informant and put them inside the campaign? Because I can tell you, I never spoke to anyone from the FBI. Uh, let me cut in here. Uh, in other words, right here, Chris Wallace, what is he, Chris Wallace's aim? He is already has... President Trump convicted of some wrongdoing. Do you see what, what Chris Wallace is asking here? And what Gowdy said, look, look at this. Well, how do you like the fact they had people infiltrating our campaign? Can you imagine? I am even more convinced that the FBI did exactly what my fellow citizens would want them to do when they got the information they got and that it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. Corey, uh, that's Trey Gowdy. He's a conservative Republican. He led the Benghazi investigation, and he is undercutting what the president and, frankly, people like you talk about when he's... You see what I'm saying? Oh, he did lead the Benghazi investigation. What happened with that? What happened with that? Did Hillary get off? Yes, she did. So what does that tell you? So uh, he's undercutting what the president said and what people like you say, he just said. So if the president isn't under fire, isn't under the investigation as if Ga uh, what Gowdy's talking about, why is Chris Wallace so adamant about uh, the president and everybody uh, uh, being undercut? Will you discuss spy day? Well, Chris, I'm very concerned. What we don't know unequivocally is did the FBI take an informant and put them inside the campaign? Because I can tell you, I never spoke to anyone from the FBI as the campaign manager for 18 months of that campaign. Never did they notify me of their concerns about potential Russian meddling. Never did they notify me or anybody else while I was there of a potential spy entering the campaign. Never did they notify anybody that I'm aware of that they had those concerns. And what is more disturbing to me 
is there was only one campaign that was involved in the general election that took $5 million, went out and hired a former spy to go create a false dossier to spy on American citizens, and that was the Clinton campaign, and it doesn't sound like they were so concerned that they put a spy into that campaign. So this looks like potentially selective enforcement if this took place, and if it did take place, Chris, there had better be accountability for sending a spy. Now, Clapper says that's not the term we use anymore, and Brennan says we don't use the term spy. You call it what you want. When you have a paid government informant who made a lot of money trying to solicit information from a presidential campaign without notifying that campaign, that's called spying. All right, one last question I want to get to, because you have joined Vice President Pence's Political Action Committee involved in raising money and supporting Republican candidates in the midterms. Here's some of what President Trump has been saying about Democrats on the campaign trail. Remember the term? Chuck and Nancy. They don't want the wall. They want open borders. They're more interested in taking care of criminals than they are in taking care of you. We are going to protect your Second Amendment. You won't have a Second Amendment if the Democrats take over. And the president called Nancy Pelosi the MS-13 lover, of course, referring to the terrible, violent gang. Uh, I got 30 seconds for you. Any of that, do you believe, over the line for President Trump? Chris, it's, it's a clear reminder to the American people of what happens if the Democrats take control of the House of Representatives and Nancy Pelosi becomes the next speaker. Not one Democratic member of the House or the Senate voted for the historic tax cuts. This president tried to negotiate to get money for the wall and take care of the people that came to this country through no fault of their own, and the Democrats didn't want to do it because they want to politicize it. So this president has to remind the American people of what is at stake in the 2018 elections, and that is moving our country in the same direction, which is the lowest unemployment for African Americans and Hispanics ever recorded, or going back to the ways of more money in taxes and increasing your taxes under what would be Speaker Pelosi. It's a clear dichotomy, and I think the president's on the right track. Corey, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Always good to talk with you. You know, you know that Chris Wallace did not enjoy that interview, and I'm so happy. Uh, so, so Trump is under investigation. So what is Trey Gowdy talking about? That's why Mueller wants to question him, to get him on uh, perjury uh, 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 charges. What do you think it is? So Gowdy's talking out of the two sides of his mouth, and we're going to expect that Gowdy is for the president? Yeah, we saw how he did with uh, Hillary in Benghazi. This wouldn't even have been an issue because she would have been in jail already from the Benghazi issue. I mean, really? L uh, give me a break already. Uh, enough with the... Uh, these uh, these uh, false narratives that they're pushing on the internet. Oh, believe in this, believe in that. No, this is what is going on. This is what's going on. Mueller is after Trump. That's the bottom line. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.